Hello, I'm Noah, and just like Rio, I'm covered in nipples, and I'm joined with the only person I trust to do the broom ritual with, Derek. We love switching brooms. What can we say? (laughs) (laughs) Holding, flying on, none of that sounds good. (laughs) Yes, my broom partner. episode four by itself but you're getting episode four and episode five together you're getting a double stack you're getting a double helping helping double meat um stuffing more food and getting full yeah we're doing a double episode there's two episodes in this one (laughs) (laughs) we're doing episode four and episode five we were um had a little vacation we went to disney we got relaxed we had a lot of food the international food and wine festival was happening oh I ate so many cheesy things. Mm-hmm. They were mm-hmm. delicious. Uh, before we get into that, <laughs> <laughs> make sure you're following us. Make sure you're subscribing. If you're not subscribing to us, what are you doing? Like, what? hi, subscribe. That makes us happy. That will make our brooms fly very high. Right? Yeah. Witchy things. Yeah. It will make our cauldrons bubble over. <laughs> that one's fun. I like that one. Stick with the second one. <laughs> you're like, mm. <laughs> not great. Um, yeah, Patreon. We got a Discord with a... Agatha Coven spoiler chat. So if you want to talk to people, go, go, go right in there. All of it's down below. Major, 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 major spoiler alert. Yes. We will be talking about these two episodes and we will also be talking about the thing that happened at the end of the fifth episode. (laughs) Spoiler alert. As opposed to not talking about the end of episode four. (laughs) Just know there's that thing. (laughs) All right. But let us officially take a bite of Agatha all along episode four. If I Can't Reach You, Let My Song Teach You, written by Giovanna Sarkis and Jack Schaefer, and Episode 5, Darkest Hour, Wake Thy Power, written by Laura Monti and Jack Schaefer, both directed by Rachel Goldberg. So, Rio joins the coven on their next two trials, where both Alice and Agatha have a mother of a time. Lilia, Jennifer, and Alice grow closer. Agatha and Rio's past pulls them together while pushing them apart. And teen may just be the ultimate magical mama's boy. Ooh. Ooh. So episodes four and five, what did you think? Oh, what, what did I think? What did I think? Great. They're good. How did you feel? What did you think? <laughs> yeah, they, they were good. I, I think I liked episode four a little more than episode five. Um, my biggest critique, episode five, way too short. 24 minutes? Are you kidding me? What are we doing? What are we doing? <laughs> Way too short, especially with that reveal. Anyway, mm-hmm. um, really liked episode four. The thing that I'm really liking about these episodes and the more we go on is that Agatha herself is going through a lot. There's a lot of layers that are being pulled back, um, even though she's resisting a little bit. There's moments that we get to see her be that leader that she's so good at being, but doesn't like to be. Mm. Um, so I'm liking seeing that a little bit. Um yeah, I, I think it's getting those Halloween vibes. It's getting that that fall feeling going. So I'm very happy. Yeah, I agree with you that I was I liked episode four more than I liked episode five. I think we liked I think we liked episode four more than episode five, or liked episode five less than episode four for similar yet different reasons. Mm-hmm. Um, I I personally think that there was too much packed into such a short episode episode five episode five yeah and i just think that like some of the things felt a little too rushed and were a little too confusing um so that's my main critique but still both were incredibly entertaining i love this group of witches um and now that rio is part of the pack well that's even better oh my god i mean this whole time i'm like i know rio is supposed to be in the show post haste please give me rio back I'm glad she came back in episode four. Yeah. Um, her entrance was amazing. It was very like coming out of a grave that like really cool, like reverse, but not reverse, like bones cracking. Oh, mm-hmm, it's just so mm-hmm. cool. It's creepy, but yeah. also like she's cool about it. <laughs> yeah. She's such a wild card for this group. And I love that for them. I think that she's kind of always going through the opposite of what everyone else is going through. But also everyone finds her really sexy for some reason. I mean, Patty Lapone calls her a spooky bitch. <laughs> I can't believe they said bitch on Disney. That's Plus. <laughs> so hilarious. And I love Patty Lapone even more than I ever have. 
Uh, she's really bringing Lilia to life. And I think that, you know, them all being very skeptical of Rio um, is interesting because they summoned her. That's exactly who they summoned, right? I, yeah, I feel like... Did they, she bring Advil? Well, no. No. <laughs> I feel like she... They could have been a little better with their wants in, mm. in a person, but also did they have a choice, really? Right. I don't think so. Uh, yeah, I do think that they were very flippant in some of the things, especially Alice and, and Jennifer. Jennifer was like good to look at. Yeah. Which, I mean, she, yeah, is. she is. And she wants her number, which is fine. I love that part where she's like, I don't know if I should like trust her. Like if I can't trust or something like that, like hate her or want her number. And I'm like, yeah, yeah I like this. <laughs> That's just the Rio Vidal energy yeah. that she gives off. <laughs> I love it. Um, she, she definitely was missed in this. Um, so beginning of episode four, we get to, we see Sharon laid to rest. Um, and I want to talk about this specifically real quick because there was something that Agatha said and teen was the only one that heard. And she says something like, I didn't think you would do it. Or I didn't think you had it in you or something like that. It's like, who is she talking to? Mm. And Sharon's the only one that we know isn't a witch. Right. So it's interesting. I'm curious if like, is she talking to the road? Um, I think one thing I do want to like take back that I said in a previous episode was like, I feel like Agatha hasn't been here before. Like she's lying. I, she hasn't been here before, but that's because the road changes for the coven. Mm. So that makes sense that she's never been there before. So I take it back. She's probably been to the road before. It's just a different kind of road. It's Agatha kind of, keeps getting more and more perplexing to me as these episodes go on. And I feel like I can't really pinpoint who Agatha is. It almost makes me feel like she has like multiple personalities or something like that, because sometimes she's so caring and so worried about teen and what's going on. And other times she's, she hates everyone. She doesn't want to do it. And then also she's trying she, to cheat. She's trying to cheat. So it's just so confusing and it, and it feels like what is prompting her to have these very different reactions to things. It's like, who is Agatha? Not to get like deep in the beginning of this podcast, like 10 minutes in <laughs> to this podcast. If I'm going to like analyze it, right. And like, think like, why is Agatha doing this? Because I think in WandaVision, she had a clear, like, I need to figure out who this person is that has all this power and take it. Right. I think as we're seeing more with her, figuring out what happened to her son, what is this relationship between her and Rio, everything, right? I, if I could just like, I guess, assume or whatever, in episode five, when she does see her mother and there's that part where she's like, why do you hate me so much? Like that is Agatha. That's, I feel like that's Agatha. That's not Agatha trying to like put on anything. She's actually genuinely asking her mother. And I feel like she acts this way because she's constantly assumed to be this thing and this bad person and so her defense is to be that person and to be like the person that's going to like make a snide comment or be an asshole to you or take the upper hand or lie or whatever it is um so it's interesting but then we get those glimpses of like how caring and nurturing and a good leader she is so it's like she's fighting herself yeah on what people are assuming that she is it's it's bizarre but it's almost like she can't help herself right she can't help but be evil and do things that are considered wrong it's almost like she did something wrong one time because she didn't know and she was too young and she's always been that person and it's like she, she that's like her defense mechanism mm. is to like be an asshole you know yeah <laughs> like, I don't know. That's what I'm getting. That's my vibe. Yeah, no, I, I, I think you're, you, you, I think you have something there for sure. It's just as a viewer trying to figure out who this character really is. Do you, would you rather her lean more villain or do you want her to have a redemption story? Like, well, I think it's hard because I think, uh, we love Catherine Hahn in this role. So we want her to have a redemption story because we just kind of care about it in that way. But in looking at all of her actions, can she ever really redeem herself? Mm. You know, when, as far as what we know, right, she killed her mother. She killed her entire mother's coven. She's eaten children. She's <laughs> given up her own child for the dark hold. So it feels like, are those things you can really be redeemed from? You know, and, I, and it also just makes me wonder, the, when, you, when you are a witch in this world, is there always some piece of you that's, evil 
mm. or dark. Because even if we think of Wanda, Wanda went down a dark road in WandaVision, had a redemption, and then in Doctor Strange, didn't have a redemption. Mm. So it's almost like this magic drives you to do things that would be considered evil, but it's because you're doing it for what you think is the right reason. Yeah, maybe. I mean, I, I, I guess it would depend on what type of witchcraft you would be, right? Because, mm-hmm. I mean, I don't see how, like, Jen doesn't seem like she's outright evil. Like, she's sarcastic and stuff, but I don't think, like, you know what I mean? So it's like she's like potions or whatever that is. And, like, Lilia, it's like, I mean, I don't, I don't know how she would be bad, but whatever Agatha is, the ability, she did dabble in dark magic to consume power so from others. So maybe the dark hold, those who have the dark maybe. hold. I mean, we saw what happened to Wanda. Right. When she dabbled with the dark hole, she became that Wanda. <laughs> right. So it's like for Agatha, because she has dabbled with the dark hold, you know, there's just a seed of darkness yeah, in her. Maybe. And so she's always fighting that. Yeah. I think I personally, I, I like her being ambiguous and mm-hmm. I like not knowing which way she's going to go. So I would be fine with that. I'm just not sure like as a main character of like a series, like how that's going to work. So I think that's why having that like story with her son and what happened with that is going to really like humanize and like make us feel for her. But I think really by the end of it, depending on what her actions are, is going to cement like, do they want us to like her or do they want us to fear her? Right. Um, Or do they want us to be like, yeah, you can watch my kid, just not like all the time. (laughs) Well, (laughs) no, when she watches your kid, she locks them up in your basement. So definitely don't want her to watch your kid or she'll eat them. Yeah. Um, So going into episode four, what did you think about the trial? Um, What did you think about Alice's trial? It was very 70s. It was a jam sesh. um, Fleetwood Mackie. Yeah, I loved it. I really liked that setting. Um, It was kind of fun in the sense that it was just one big round romper room. Um, And I I mean, the costuming is amazing. The set design is incredible. And I love sort of I love seeing them embody these different versions of themselves. And in this one. You know, they were kind of just like feeling the vibe. It was such a fun way to carry over that magic from WandaVision and then seeing these people like when they see themselves in those outfits to kind of like get into that mm-hmm. is so much fun, especially these two, because they're very different. It's like one is like very rocky in 70s and free spirit. And then the next one is like 80s, campy horror, Crystal Lake, yeah, kids at a slumber party. So much fun. Mm-hmm. Um, I really like this one. I like that they keep bringing back the Ballad of the Witch's Road. Changing a little bit, getting that, oh, the thing of knowing that Alice's mother, one, her coven was her fans. Beautiful, beautiful way of thinking about it. Um, and also that the song was to protect Alice this entire time. And I think Agatha says something of like, no matter what, somebody out there is playing that song that you hate so much, but is protecting you and has kept you alive. For Alice to like realize all the things that she's hated about mm-hmm. her mom or like angry about it was all to help her. Oh, gut punch. Yeah. It's, it's one of those things of like, you never truly know what's behind someone's actions and that her mother knew that she couldn't save herself, but she put all of herself into saving her daughter. And like, and she realized that the curse was real. Mm. She was like, Oh, it's, it's a real thing. Like I can see it. And I can kill it. But she was like, I just thought like I'm the jobs just went to shit, blah, blah, blah. Everything I touch just doesn't work out. And it's like, it's because of that curse. It wasn't because of her is because of that curse. Yeah. The curse is real when it starts burning talon marks into your coven, you know? So I think it's time to be like, oh yeah, maybe it wasn't fake this entire time. Not Patty Lapone. Not Patty Lapone writhing on the floor. You can't do that. How dare you? I would have been Jen and be like, I'm not going to stay in this circle. Right leaving here. the circle. Yeah. Um, we need to talk about Patty Lapone. We need to talk about Lilia for a second because in episode four is particularly so funny. Yes. I love the fact that Lilia is really a comedic character, but not in a way of her being a fool. Yeah. She just has like these one liners and the delivery, obviously, by Patty Lapone is perfect it's really showing that like such a seasoned performer actor entertainer award-winning person could have so much fun and also bring so much to a new role you know yes um even just something as simple i'm sure everybody has seen it by now 
Um, but the super cut of any time it cut to her during the jam session, she had different instruments. Yeah. Like what? It was so good. I think I can't remember which one it was, but it was like the triangle and she was just like, yeah, what am I right. doing? Yeah. <laughs> it's so funny. Um, but really smart to have this, this trial for Alice be, you have to play the song that you've hated so much. And also it sounds so good. Banishing a demon by just belting out your mother's song. Beautiful. Yeah. So good. Really, really it. good. Now, the question is, one of the questions is, you know, while they're rocking out and well, actually right before it, the demon throws teen through the plate glass window and teen is almost dying. And so it's like, what's the, what do you think the significance of that is? I have, so, okay. We all, we all know the review with teen, right? We, we told Derek and I had a conversation before recording this and not bringing up the reveal of teen in the beginning, right? Because that's like what we're getting to with this episode. Um, so we know the reveal. We're using lots of self-control. Lots of self-control. Right now. Um, so we're getting there. We still have <laughs> gay tension to talk about. <laughs> it's our lives. Um, but just looking back with teen particularly, I'm there's a lot happening in this that I'm not trusting, especially with this is the people that worked on WandaVision. We got the Agatha all along reveal. The rug can be pulled out from underneath us. We're going to get fistowed in this and in some degree, right? Um, teen getting thrown is interesting. Did somebody throw teen? Mm. Why would the demon that clearly sits on you? Because Alice, whenever the demon was released with the record playing backwards, she was like, does anybody feel lighter? The demon, the curse left Let go. her. Yeah. Right. So why would the demon throw him to get him away from everybody else it's it's very interesting i don't know why that would happen um and also he's the one that usually finds the clues mm -hmm. in the trial i don't know there's something i don't trust you teen it's you know what it is for me it's it just feels like he he already knows the game Mm. it's like he's played this game before he's like already gone through the escape room and is just exactly. like exactly oh guys one of the combination codes is under the candlestick exactly so they're always spinning like wild little tops and he's always like letting them go and then he wrangles them in and he's like okay mm. here's the thing we have to do so it just feels like it's like is he the one planning this entire thing I, it does give that vibe right um okay so i think Going into Rio, going to the Tina of all, going to the Agatha of it all and stuff. I think the thing is that we need to like, I guess, zoom out, right? Theory corner. We're in theory corner. Um, one of the prevailing theories is that Rio is death, mm -hmm. right? Um, which the more and more you think about it, the more it's like, I could see that. The Ouija board, when they said death, she laughed. Um, they keep calling her a, um, what is it? A tourist, a creepy lurker and stuff like that. It's like, she's not really part of it, but she is. Yeah. And, um, and like anytime there's some danger, well, not anytime, but a few times Agatha just looks at her and goes, no, mm. almost like, don't take this person now. Well, and that, okay. So let's, let's talk about that specifically, because I feel like once I heard these theories of her being death, I was like, mm, that's interesting. And in Marvel death is per, per, like, um, personified as like a woman, right? Mm. Um, Thanos fell in love with her, blah, 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 all that stuff. If she is death, that scene in particular kind of sold me on it. So when at the end of the trial, when teen gets stabbed by that huge shard of glass that like he played through a whole song, like Jesus Christ, um, and he's dying. She Agatha looks at Rio and is like, don't. And it makes me think like, don't take him. Right. Totally. Like you would be telling death that like, don't. It's so particular and like specific yeah and that's and, and it kind of harkens back to harkness uh, that scene of them in the recording booth when she says something like i'm getting like antsy or i'm getting i want to cause some damage. i want to cause some damage and for death she needs to kill people i mean so is this okay again this is wild right and she also does i think agatha in the same episode when she when she appears behind her she's like boo um, and she's like, not yet or something. It's, it's very weird. Like Agatha knows Rio's deal and why she's there. And also we learn in episode <laughs> five that Rio hates ghosts and a ghost is a spirit that can't cross over because it has unfinished business. Right. 
So for death, that's like a failure. What if, okay, again, we're doing a lot of what ifs here. What if at the end of the trial, because I think it was asked in this episode, maybe one before, whatever, um, the them on the road kind of gets a little fuzzy. They ask how many witches like left with Agatha and she said one, just one. So I'm curious if that witch is Rio, could be, could not be. Um, but also at the end of the trial, if you're all there, your whole coven, whoever, whatever it is, either can get everybody back or get the thing that you want. You know, I feel like the trial would do that. Like the mm-hmm. final one would be like, are you going to leave all your friends behind? Right. Your coven. Or are you going to get the thing that you came here for? Right. That's what I feel like could happen. Um, I don't know. And Rio is just kind of there like reaping all of the souls that happen. Yeah. We also have another. Oh my gosh. So confusing. We have another (laughs) scene in episode four. It's actually the end of episode four where Rio tells Agatha that teen is not her boy. Yes. Yeah. And so did Agatha have some hope? I think so. There is in this episode, again, this is like layers, right? Being pulled back from Agatha. She put her fabulous purple cloak or jacket, whatever it is, over Teen when he was healing. Mm. When he woke up, it, it was on her and she was sitting there watching him. So it's very much like somebody that cares. It's that motherly instinct um, or that parental instinct, right? I think she did hope in some way, somehow this was her son. Um, but for Rio to be like, it's, it's not your son. Either she didn't believe her fully or that might have like kind of put a like a chink in her armor. Is that what it's called? Kink in her armor? Yeah. Um, so I, I'm not too sure. I mean, I think we can believe Rio. Yeah. Ish. Now. <laughs> right. And I, I think that we also need to talk a little bit about Rio and Agatha's relationship. What is it? Well, it Just was. Just fucking kiss already. Well, exactly. And like, so. That scene, I... Never before in a show, aside from Heartstopper, have I been like, kiss, <laughs> kiss. You do not go up behind somebody and like play with their hair like that and also like lean into it mm. and not kiss. Well, that's the thing is that what is stopping them? Their past is stopping them. It seems there's some Too complicated, there's some trauma there. Yeah. We have to unpack the trauma. Who is the celestial therapist in Marvel? Um, no, there is one. They need one. They, they all need. They one. all need. They yeah. all need a therapist. <laughs> um, because there's there's just so much past there, and in that scene when they are sitting around the campfire and talking about their scars, Rio alludes to something that she had to do something to someone she loves because it's her job. Yeah. And so, to me, you know, in trying to decode that, it seems like maybe she had something to do with taking Nicholas Scratch from Agatha. It's really interesting, right? Because it's like, we know Nicholas Scratch is a thing because they're telling us. We have yet to see anything aside from like a fake room with Mm. like baseball memorabilia and stuff like that um, that has his name. And then within episode five of Teen saying Nicholas Scratch and her having that reaction. So it's, it's really, it's interesting that we haven't gotten much on that. I'm thankful, but it's really, I, I need to know, I need to know what that relationship is because that does suck for Rio having to do something she didn't want to. And I'm curious if it was one of those things where like Nicholas Scratch was like dying of natural causes or something and Agatha knowing Rio had to take him and then that's what caused the riff. That's what I'm hoping, right? That's like the, the cute version um, where neither of them wanted it to happen, but without power being gained. I'm not sure. I don't know. I just know that they really want to fuck each other. Right. And I want it so bad. Well, that's the interesting thing is that there's still so much (laughs) tension there. And I think one of the other interesting things about them is that they share those little, little connections that people in long-term relationships have of that talking without talking. Exactly. Just with the look, knowing what the other person's thinking. And even in episode five, Rio being so defensive of Agatha when it comes to her mother because in any good relationship, you talk to each other about the things that have you affected know. you in your life, right? Yeah. So Agatha has probably told her tons about her mother and what it felt like to be not loved and not wanted. And so 
Rio is not willing, even though Rio is death, maybe if that's the case, yeah, right? Right. She's still not willing to give Agatha over to a ghost, right? Where she hates ghosts, right? <laughs> Which would make sense. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's really interesting. I I love I love the acting that they're doing in this, particularly Catherine Hahn. I feel like her minute, just tiny facial expression changes are so good. She says so much with how she's acting. Um, I love that she like kind of amps up the the flair and the showmanship of like whipping and flipping her cape any mm-hmm. chance she gets. But then sometimes she'll give that look and it's just like, I'm terrified. And then I also feel sorry for you. It's just, it's really, really good. And it's not really until episode five, like the, the small little moments between Agatha and Rio. I'm like, this is really cute. Like, please just kiss. Like, let's get this over with. And then episode five, you're like, oh, I can see that Rio does really care for her. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's not just like a physical or sexual attraction type thing. Right. Um, I'm just, I'm waiting to see like what that story is. We are going to get a flashback. We have to. I hope so. There's too much for them to just sit around a campfire and tell us. Yeah. We need to see it. They've given us far too many breadcrumbs to not lead us to a very specific place of knowing what the hell actually happened with them. Right. Right. So episode four, anything else before we move on to episode five? Because we got Sharon Davis, RIP. We don't know what happens to non-witches or even if you die on the road. Yeah. Do you stay? Do you go? Well, she's buried. Or is she? Because did Rio take her body over? I don't know how it works. Nah, she Rio did come up from a grave. So uh, I don't know how that works. Yeah. Um, yeah, we got Rio back. The trial was amazing. Satanic panic playing that record backwards. Um, great. Okay. Reveal. Kids not yours. Episode five. Episode five. <laughs> Here we go. Episode five. So again, in, in episode five, we have the appearance of the Salem Seven. Yes, I loved that beginning. Oh, that was so cool. It gave me like feeling of good American Horror Story mm-hmm. opening, right? Um, I just needed that like, <laughs> <laughs> that thing, <laughs> not a Transformer, the opening to... <laughs> it did sound a little bit like a Transformer. Now it that you did. It. That's a good talent. <laughs> Thank wow. you. Um, not a talent I want. I want something <laughs> else. <laughs> um, yes, I loved... Oh, I want more of them. It's like, can you speak? Are you, are you allowed to talk? <laughs> yeah. Well, and I just, it, it's very cool to see them. I mean, I feel like they got dancers or, or acrobat. I think they did. Or gymnasts yeah. to play these roles because they're doing like body contortions. They're really taking on the spirit of the animal mm. that they are, you know? And so I, I just think that they're so cool as a set. I love them. And even that one cicada witch who explodes into like thousands of them oh that was so cool love it um i loved that it made them have to get on brooms i just love that whole thing of just seeing how each one of them the thought of like having to i guess imbue in the broom with power and then give it to somebody like when team was like oh i get one too and alice was like as long as you give me one too i love that because we're getting these things of like the coven and witches where it's not isolated you have to do things with your coven you mm-hmm. need the give and take you there's need, power in that yeah and you need that unity um so i love seeing that but i also like seeing how they decorated the one for the other so like you know uh what is it jen gets this one with like kind of handles and it's like very pretty and it fits jen and then lilia doesn't really she got a stick she got she just got a plain old stick she, i love that patty lapone <laughs> i'm calling her patty lapone um was like you could have done better <laughs> If I could do this in the amount of time, you could have done better. Yeah. I, I also think it's interesting um, how, again, Teen is the one that suggested them going on brooms. brooms. Right? It's like all he keeps these... finding the clues. Yeah. Yeah. It, it's, it is. And like part of me is like, okay, the road changes with the coven, right? So no witch will go on the same road again. It's interesting that he just is a little comfortable now rio definitely seems like she's not scared she's having the time of her life she's joking around she's She's cackling right she's like i'm fine i'm not gonna die teen is interesting like he has gotten hurt but he's been saved he just always has the answer it's just interesting that he's he's on this road with some some of these witches who have been around for centuries and he always thinks of the solution before they do i'm I'm, i don't want to think that it's like plot armor because like we know like plot armor is like because of who they are they're not going to die or nothing's going to happen to them 
And I'm curious, and this is just putting this out there because like story reasons, I'm curious if they gave him that role for him to be useful. Mm. You know what I mean? Like maybe it's not because he actually planned something or is behind some of it, which the end reveal, who I have a thought about that, but maybe it's just because it's like, we need him to do something. So like the kid is going to be excited and more observant. I don't know. It feels like, right, they're all on the road for a reason. Most of them is to get their powers back. But what is teen's reason for being on the road? And is it that at the end of the road, maybe someone's there. Maybe he can get someone back. Yeah. And that's his deal. Yeah. I mean, okay, let's let's get to the house before we talk about the (laughs) reveal, right? We're almost there, guys. We will talk about the reveal. The reveal will be revealed in due time. Um, Loved... Oh my God. Love so much. The broom scene across the moon. It was amazing. That look that one, when they were imbuing their brooms, I don't know what you call it. The ritual, um, Agatha and, uh, Rio just fucking kiss again already. Like the way they looked at each other and they were like, Oh, okay. Yeah. Give me the broom. And then her looking over at her when they're flying in the sky and Rio being like, eh? brooms are very sexy. <laughs> they can be. <laughs> That's what this has shown me. I'm just like, mm, kiss, but Man, the road making them go back to the ground. Yeah. So fucking cool. Right? So it, cool. That made so much sense. It's like you can't get off the road by trying to fly away. The road will always bring you back to it. That's just like in the last one when Alice didn't want to go to the house because she clearly recognized it. It appeared in front of her again. Mm-hmm. It's like, you're not going to be able to escape this, which I think she said in that one. It's like, you can't go back. You have to go forward. Right. Um, so we actually clearly saw that. I loved the setting for this. This is like, oh, I was waiting for it so bad ever since the trailer. I am bummed it was really short and a little, I do agree with you, it was a little confusing, maybe because it was so short. All the other trials, we kind of got comfortable in the space that were, they were in. In this one, it was like immediate. And then like people were like pretending and weren't pretending. And then there was ghosts and then people died. And it was like, oh my God, a lot had happened. Um, but I just love the setting. I, I love that evil dead feeling that kids at a slumber party doing things they shouldn't be doing. Um, very much up my alley. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, again, just like in the last episode and all the episodes prior to this, the costumes are great. The settings, the sets are fantastic. Uh, but yeah, I, I, I'm just so discombobulated by this whole middle chunk of this episode because I just didn't know what they were trying to do with it, right? So it's supposed to be, well, we think it's Agatha's trial. Rio said it. Right. Rio said it. Um, Lilia kind of agrees and they have to play with the Ouija board. And then it's like, they're sent a message that they have to punish Agatha. And then her mother's ghost comes out of nowhere and then goes inside her body and then comes out of her body. And then, I don't know, it was just like... (laughs) (laughs) and then of course she's pretending first and so it's just very confusing and then at the end another ghost comes through on the ouija board so who was really the ghost you know what i mean it's just all very it was it was a lot and i'm just like what was the point of this i don't know (laughs) i don't i I don't expect you to have the answer that's just a a question for marvel yeah and for jack shaver i think I mean, one of the things I had thought of, like, were they wrong? Was it really Teen's trial and not Agatha's trial? Because Teen was the one that ultimately figured it out. Most of the other trials, the person that's trial it is ultimately stops it from happening. So it was interesting that if this was Agatha's trial, why did Teen stop it? He found the answer to stop it. Um, I'm not sure. Was stop? I mean... Ultimately was stopping it, punishing Agatha, and by hearing her child's voice, that was punishment enough? Maybe. But at Maybe the same was... time, what was all the mom stuff? I, I, I don't know. I just yeah. think it was a way to remind us of like her relationship with her mother. Because, I mean, I, I will say a lot of this show is a lot about where we've come from mm. and the bloodline and everything like that. So it does make sense that her mother was in this in some way. I will say... I think the only reason why her mother appeared is because she's the one that took her hand off the planchette. Nobody else did. And so by doing that, I could see like that person's worst enemy or the thing that they 
are scared of the most or whatever coming back. Okay. So like maybe if Lilia did it, maybe whoever in her life betrayed her or whatever that would hurt her the most came back, you know? So that's, okay. that's okay. what I'm thinking. I think that I'll, I'll go with that. Because like, what if they did keep their hands on the Ouija board enough and then it was like Punisher, Punisher and stuff. And then it was like Nicholas Scratch, like signed Nicholas Scratch. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like maybe the trial c- continued or evolved the way it did because she did what she wasn't supposed to do. The rules clearly said, keep your hands on the planchette. Don't take them off. Right. Right. So mm, that's that's my thinking. That's what I got from it. So, mm. okay, that's fair. I did I, like seeing her mother, though, again. That was nice. I mean, not nice, but like. <laughs> I love seeing her get tortured. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I will say her um, having a spirit inside her, that was really fun. You know, that's that really funny part from the trailer and everything. But it's, I wish there was more because right. like that was the funny part. Right. You're getting, ha- having Jen being like, she's faking it. And then Lily being like, she's not faking. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I just. Again, it's this thing of it was a shorter episode and it feel, felt like there was a lot of wasted time. It, it, yeah, it's like they used their time, but like didn't give us time to like, I don't know, understand yeah. or like really feel all the stuff that was happening. Because like when Alice died, mm-hmm. but then it died, um, I was just like, well, that's weird. Like, really? Like yeah. Alice died? Like, is this what? That, like just after her trial and like her reconciling with her mother, they're going to kill her. That doesn't, that doesn't seem right. Yeah. <laughs> and it's, and it's weird in the sense of like, well, I don't know. I was thinking like, oh, well, they're all going to die. But it's like Jen didn't die, even though her trial happened already. Maybe she will die still. I don't know. And also the question is, is why did Agatha take her power? Yeah, I so because she says I didn't mean to, I couldn't help it. I don't trust her for a second. Mm. And this is this is where it's like this is why I like Agatha because you never know what Agatha you're gonna get. Um, rewatching it a second time, I was like, oh, maybe she was still possessed when she took her power. But you can clearly see her mother being banished from her body. Yeah, and then Agatha being like, ooh, there's power. Let me grab it. Now, granted, like we don't know what dark arts Agatha really dabbled in. So Mm -hmm. maybe we saw what happened with Wanda with the dark hold. I hate using that as an excuse, but like maybe whatever she dabbled in, it's like a drug, right? Like she can't help. Like she can't control taking that power when it's being thrown onto her. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, But did she control it? Did she not? I don't know because the way she acts, right. It's like she seemed remorseful when teen confronted her. But then when pushed enough, she was just like, meh, whatever. Yeah, that's it's like, like, were you playing? That's the Agatha thing of trying to go for innocence first. And See then if it works. Right. And if it doesn't work, then she turns to evil, mm-hmm. you know, and then she taunts him. Before we move on, because oh, I feel I like we're so close. I know before we have to talk about Rio and Agatha um, in this particular scene, because how much Rio didn't want. One, to leave Agatha, because it was like, punish Agatha, leave her there. That sucks, right? Imagine being left with your dead mother. To torture you for all of eternity. On the witch's road? Ah. No, thanks. Um, But Rio very much seems like that person that was protecting, right? And it was like, no, you can't have her. You're absolutely not going to do this. And it was like, she didn't want her mother to talk to her and to tell her, I should have gotten rid of you as soon as you came out of me. That sucks. Yeah, that's (laughs) fucked up. It was like you were born evil, which is so terrible to think about. I feel bad for her. I really do. Because it's like one of those things where it's like, is this what Agatha thinks that she's supposed to be? Because everybody has told her that. And so she doesn't know how to be. So she's going to be the thing that everybody says she is. She just wants to be loved. Maybe. But nobody has loved her. Except for death. (laughs) Because she's been evil. (laughs) (laughs) All right. The reveal. The reveal. Finally. I mean, like we're like 40-ish minutes in. The reveal of sludge. (laughs) Sludge slurping witches. (laughs) Ew. It did. Ew. (laughs) I'm sorry. When when the sludge slurped Agatha, it farted at the end. You Mm -hmm. can't deny that. Mm -hmm. (laughs) it did it was cute (laughs) we know she's not dead right i thought i did think it was a little silly um so the reveal of teen most likely i'm 90 percent sure he's wiccan 
right? Yeah. We got the reveal of him having power, having a crown that's just like his mother. Ah, oh, that scene with Agatha and Teen, so good. So good. So here's the conversation we have to have now, right? Mm. One, how do you feel about Joe Locke potentially, most certainly, probably, being Wiccan, being one of the most prominent queer characters in Marvel, finally getting live action? Let me tell you a story. Okay. It goes like this. Mm-hmm. Joe Locke is our queer king. <laughs> and we shall all bow down to him and he can play whatever queer role he wants to. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, the, the thing is, is that I, I don't know. It, why wouldn't he be a good choice to be Wiccan? You know, mm. maybe I'm not familiar enough with the character, but he's got black curly hair. He can do an American <laughs> accent. He's gay, gay, gay. <laughs> so what's the problem, everyone? Yeah, I mean, I do. I think there is some... I mean, not to get into like the casting of it all and everything like that, but I do think there there is some like criticism that is warranted to listen to about, you know, erasing the Jewish heritage and stuff like that. And that does tend to happen to Marvel a lot. Mm. I will give them that big like downgrade of like a lot of your Jewish characters, you didn't cast Jewish people mm. um, or like Wanda Romani and stuff like that. So it's like, I get it. I get that criticism. One of the things that I have seen is like them, the synergy, because a lot of times what happens in the MCU bleeds into the comics or they'll like change things. And a lot of people are are seeing that instead of Billy Maximoff and like the wiki pages and stuff, it's like Billy Kaplan. And so like they're kind of changing it to that, which I don't believe they're going to stick like that. Um, but going into the the show, right? Do you think because Agatha was like, you're just like your mother, like she... Plain put it out there like you are Wanda's kid, assuming she's talking about Wanda. Do you think that the sigil broke at that moment? Because once it's not needed, the sigil's done. So if it was to stop Agatha particularly or which kind of knowing who he is and she figured it out, do you think that's the sigil's done? Well, it's interesting, though, because no one said his name. Right. right. She clearly figured it out. Like, she's like, I know who your mother is, so I know who you are. Yeah. It almost just seems like, I don't know if it's a sigil thing. Personally, I just think that he was hiding who he was. You know, so I, I thought that, but Agatha, the witches, said with the sigil that it works on the witch that cast it as well. Mm-hmm. So is there a chance that Billy, if this is Billy, cast it on himself? And so he didn't know until it was broken? Well, it almost... Well, what if he cast it on his, himself because he knew he had to hide his identity so he couldn't even take the chance of himself slipping up? I mean, that makes sense. Right? Like, that's the feeling I got because yeah. there was something in this episode that I was like, this is off. Like, there could be a part, an episode where it shows you, like, kind of goes back to some of the trials and, like, if Teen was orchestrating some of this... It would like go back and show like teen in the background, like doing something Mm -hmm. like, you know, like those kind of things that they do in shows where it's like, really, this was happening. Um, Something in this episode did feel a little off to me. I was like, this is weird Um, because why would then he get rid of the witches? The other witches like he controlled Lilia and Jen and then got rid of them as well. It's interesting. I don't know why he would do that. Like he needs help on the road. Maybe he doesn't, though. Yes, he does. That's the thing. (laughs) I mean. He's obviously incredibly powerful. He's obviously super intelligent. Just like his mother controlling people. So what he needed was a coven to sing the song to get him down there. Mm. That's all he needed. And then the sigil broke and then he... And now he's got blue powers. Do you think... Um, I mean, side note though, Rio nowhere to be found. Mm-hmm. Where's st- she? She's still with Alice. So I'm hoping because if you look back at some of the trailers and stuff like that, again, I don't know if this is a spoiler or not. There is a few scenes that we haven't seen with Alice yet that still have to come. Again, they could be flashbacks. Um, I don't think they killed Alice, personally. Um, But if we're going with the theory that she's death, maybe Rio does show some mercy and brings her back to life. Because if she does love Agatha, maybe she doesn't want the coven to completely hate her. Mm. I don't know why she would do that. I don't know. I also, well, uh, I feel like... Mercy's overrated is what Agatha said, so... Because she kept those kids alive and then they came back as the Salem Seven. (laughs) So 
Uh, as animorphs. Yes, I, I, even better. <laughs> I mean, is there also something to be said of maybe Rio and Teen are working together in some way? That's weird. And right, I think we had a conversation about this in the first or the second episode where we were like, why would, didn't Teen do anything while Rio and Agatha were beating the shit out of each other in the kitchen? Right. It's because he knew what was going to happen. Yeah, there there is something weird going on because it's like when Rio was first introduced, she definitely seemed like an antagonist, right? And then it was like, oh, there's some history there. And like, she's like licking her hand and this is like really sexy, but also like, are you going to kill her? And now mm-hmm. the more that they're on the road together, the more she's like, I don't know, protective of Agatha and not necessarily wanting to kill her. So, yeah, because there's that whole thing of like, I'm supposed to kill you. So was Agatha supposed to die at some point and she's just been evading her ever mm. since? I don't know. I mean, we also have to... Theories. Right. I Theories have, abound. I mean, I don't like kind of like you said before, like, don't forget that 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 thing of in a show when like this is what was really going on that literally happened in one one division it was called agatha all along right and so this could very much be billy all along wicked all along i hope they don't do that because it's like the same people doing the same thing again Mm. it's like you already have like the homage to one division of each trial being a different thing right i hope they don't do that but i have a feeling that the reveals aren't close to being over. Yeah. I mean, there's also a part of me, a theory that I have about the witch's road as a whole is that it's actually purgatory in Mm. some way. So you're halfway between life and death. And so by the end of it, it's when either you survive and you live or you die and you die there. Mm. And so I, maybe there's something to be said of the fact or, or a question of like, you know, is teen really, just a different version of Wiccan from another time that's, you know? I mean, yeah, in the comics, the Children's Crusade and all that stuff, it's very confusing and it's a lot, right? And they could easily be going into that territory. Mephisto was mentioned. I mentioned in a previous episode that, um, what's it called? The, the, the souls of her kids were actually, Fisto had them and then she had to get them back, all that stuff, right? And then they were reincarnated as Billy Kaplan and you know tommy and stuff like that so and then he found out who his mother was afterwards mm-hmm, right mm-hmm. so that very much could be the case happening here like maybe wiccan billy teen <laughs> doesn't know who his mother is or thought if this is billy kaplan that rebecca and jeff kaplan were his parents and he had this fixation on witches you know, and the sigil was always on him. Mm. But then with the sigil being off and him having access to his power, maybe he still didn't know who his mother was. But the fact that Agatha was like, you're just like your mother. And it's like, wait, Rebecca from Eastview? Like, she's not a witch. Right. So then... It made something snap into place. Like, oh, wait, that's not my mother. Who is my mother? Watch this. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Um, doing what my mother did. <laughs> Um, so I don't know, like, again, this is theories, right? This is like anything could happen at this point, but I don't know. It's, it's, it's a lot. I'm, I love the reveal. It's one of those things where it's like, we all knew it was coming. And then when it happened, it was like, oh, Billy Eilish, you see me in a crown, Joe Locke looking good. I think, <laughs> I think episode six has a lot of work to do. I think the next three, four. Three, four, six, seven, eight, nine, four have a lot to do. Yeah. Um, I definitely feel a flashback episode coming, but we still have, I know we have Lilia's trial where they, she looks like Glinda. There's the wicked witch and everything, um, gravity and stuff like that. So I'm very excited. So they're going to come back from the muck. Right. They have to, right? Or how do they get back to the road is the thing. Mm. Where did they go? Did Billy actually, (laughs) Teen actually help them by getting them off the road? I don't know. He seemed pretty angry. I don't think he was trying to help them. Yeah. And we have to figure out what Rio was doing. Yeah. And so he's probably going to be going rogue at this point Mm. and just, I don't even know what he's going to be doing. I know. I'm, I'm kind of, I'm really interested to see like if, if we know what the witch's reasons for being on there, Agatha to get her power back, right? Jen to get her power back, Lilia to get her power back. All of them 
they literally said that right before Teen revealed himself. Like, this is the point of why they're all are there mm-hmm. in one form or another. Um, teen very much being against that. Maybe Teen's real reason to be on the road is to find out where he actually comes from. If he does know who his mother is, knows that she's dead, maybe he thinks that he can bring her back. There's a lot of things that he could be on the road for. Yeah, but Agatha pushed him a little too hard. I'm curious if, like, at the end of the road... It's did I say this? the end of no. the road as we know it. Did I, did I, I don't like that song for some reason. Like, that's one of the songs where I'm just like, ugh, this song, great. It's just fast speaking, you don't yeah. like it. <laughs> No, (laughs) I'm curious if the end of the road, right? Like if we're we're thinking about the trials and what lies at the end of this road um, with Agatha saying only one witch came back from the road with her. And if a coven is typically more than two witches, um, I'm curious if it's one of those things of like the road gives you what you are missing, but is it a choice? And that's what I'm going back and forth with. I'm trying to figure out the end before we're even close to it of like, is the reason why she came back with one witch. Was it Rio? Because Rio can't die if she's death. Um, but your choice is to either, if your other coven member died, to bring them with you to leave the road as you were, but alive, or to get the thing, to get that wish that you want. I'm really mm-hmm. curious to see how that would work. It's and inter- then if there's two, how do you decide? Right. It's interesting as far as Agatha is concerned, it, because we know that for Agatha, or at least what we think the reason of her being on the road is to get her powers back, but she doesn't actually need to be on the road to get her powers back. Because as we saw, she just needs someone to blast her and then she steals their power and it becomes hers. I guess. So there was a part of me that when they said, you know, how many witches came back and she said one, it was just her. Because she killed everyone else. Um, I w- Oh, I thought they said how many came back with you. And she said mm. one, but I could be wrong. I, I think maybe I just assumed that she meant one aside from herself. But that's true. But I do think, though, when Alice was like blasting her with her magic, um, Alice looked surprised that she could do it. Mm-hmm. I don't think they were really able to do that. And then ever since banishing that right, demon. Right, 100%. So I think that's like... She found the witches that weren't able to do magic and was like, okay, I guess let's go on the road. <laughs> yeah, but then it didn't even matter because she got her powers back yeah. and then Agatha killed her. <laughs> All right, final thoughts. Final thoughts are we're still on the road. What do you think is going to happen next? Episode six. I think episode six is going to, there's going to be no teen and it's just going to be Agatha and the other two trying to figure out mm. how to escape from wherever they are. Because I do think in that trial that we saw Lilia's, we've only seen Jen and Agatha with her. So maybe they just go through the trials, just the three of them? Maybe. Mm. Maybe. How Mm. about you? What are you thinking? I think it might be a flashback episode. Mm. It seems about the time. Usually like flashback episodes are like mid season or like right before the finale. So I guess any, any of these episodes. So we're going to be like, oh, that's why. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Ooh, I'm looking forward to that. It's getting really juicy, though. Um, super juicy. Let us know what you think about the reveal, what you think is going on with Rio, Agatha. Um, again, this is fun. This is like, this is the weekly theories and mysteries that I think we missed a lot. Mm. Um, we're like Secret Invasion. We just wanted it to be done and didn't care about the th- Anyway, (laughs) but it's nice to be back in this, right? Um, So let us know what you thought. What do you think? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, until next week. Goodbye. Goodbye.